you were saying about abortion in the constitution that it doesn't you can't the constitution can't list every single right that you would have yep but it's implied in the principles in the constitution but i people were telling me well i was i tried to compare it to slavery that the states can't just make slavery legal again and they said oh well, there's an amendment but the amendment wasn't the amendment put in there because of the history of what had happened and the war and everything so they wanted it to be blatantly explicit this time, because it seems like it was obvious if you they'd been following the Constitution from the beginning, they wouldn't have allowed it. They That was a big mistake. So that's why they added that amendment. You don't need one for abortion. Yeah, I mean, of course, you don't need it for abortion. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, and, and what are they going to add one for contraception? And then we'll add one for gay, gay marriage and we'll add one for, uh, you know, uh, that I have a right to choose whatever grocery store I want to go shop in. Right. I, I, there should be there should be a enumerated right um there should be an enumerated uh uh it, it it's just they're just being idiots i mean that's that's i you know or they, or they don't understand what enumerated rights are and then the other thing i get and this is for the most sophisticated ones they said oh yes but the enumerated rights in the ninth amendment are supposed to be the rights that americans had when the constitution was signed there were no cars when the constitution was signed so i don't have a right to drive my car um, there were no, I mean, it's so concrete bound, anti-intellectual, uh, anti-historical because they, they're not looking at the history. Uh, and yes, the, 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 uh, amendment around slavery was added because for, forever the constitution was interpreted as not applying to slavery. And they wanted to make clear that, that, uh, the the federal government that the constitution applied to the states and it didn't just apply in this the 14th amendment didn't just apply to the federal government so if the states violate rights if the state violate the bill of rights then the federal government's job is to prevent it from doing that so so that's what happened after this after the civil war but yeah it's just there is a ninth amendment because and if you read the federalist paper papers because Madison was complaining that with the Bill of Rights, uh, only these rights would be protected. But but they, but and look, there's only one right. This is the other thing because the, the 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 argument could be well, but the left wants a right to a job and a right to food and a right to, but there's only one right. And 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 what the Bill of Rights is doing is breaking that up that one right into its constituents, into its applications. But the one right is the right to life. That's it. There's no other right. The right to liberty, property, pursuit of happiness are all applications of the right to life. And then the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, all the other amendments are just application of the right to life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness, breaking them down. And But you can break them down to, yes, I, I have a right to act. And then you could say you have a right to act in this way or in that way. Or, you know, every one of those is uh, constitutes um, a right um, but it, it, it's 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 silly to enumerate it all. But I'm glad they enumerated some of them because that's the only reason we have some protection, right? Thank you. All right. There is Charles. We had a Charles. Cool. Um, all right. Let's see who is next. Uh, uh, Daniel. I guess following up on the, the same thing, how how can the Supreme Court back to back um, rule the way they did on abortion and rule the way they did on the right of states to decide who can and can't own a gun for self-defense? Um, nowhere in anything that I read were they talking about the right to life or individual rights or anything else. It's all about, well, this justice said that and this 14th Amendment should be interpreted this way and so forth. But no one goes back and says, no. why do we have any of this? No, there is no conception of individual rights in the court to the extent that there's a conception, um, it's a religious conception of, of, of natural rights, God-given natural rights, but there was no concept. I mean, look, I, I have said this many times because I, I found it hard to believe the first time I heard it, but then it made sense and I verified it 
that Anthony Scalia, the darling of conservatives, the, the, the most intellectual of all our judges and so on, believed that individual rights were nonsense on stilts. Uh, he agreed with Jonathan Bentham. They, they just, where did they come from? You know, they, they, they meant nothing. And I think that, I, I, and if Scalia believed that, one of these other guys, I think the only person who has a conception of rights is, um, is uh, Thomas. But, uh, but Thomas's conception of rights is religious and, and very narrow and very dogmatic. And, you know, and if you read his uh, concurrence on, on the Roe case, you'll see he, 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 well, there's no right to gay marriage. The founders would be horrified by gay marriage. So, of course, they shouldn't be gay marriage. There's no right to contraception. There was no contraception in 1789 when the, when the, when the Constitution was ratified. So, so the Ninth Amendment doesn't apply to it. So he's an originalist in that sense. I, I encourage people, if they're interested in this issue of interpreting a constitution and how to do it, to read Tara Smith's book. God, I, I, I can't remember its name, of course. Um, unconstitutional, unconstitutional law. Maybe somebody can look it up and tell me. Um, but how, how objectively you would you need to interpret the uh, the, the American Constitution. Without rewriting it, without being an object, just being an objectivist, how do you, how do you, how, what is a proper legal approach to interpreting a constitution? And it's not textualism, originalism. She critiques these, um, and it's not, a, a, you know, subjectivism. Whatever I feel like, it, it's based on an objective interpretation of um, the constitution. And she has a whole book on that. So I encourage you. Um, I'm, encouraging you to initial review in an objective legal system yes uh, thank you uh, so it's called judicial review in an objective legal system it's by tara smith a uh, philosophy professor at the university of texas in austin um, i highly uh, encourage you to, to 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 get that book if this is of interest to you how you would interpret that uh, how you would interpret in in, in uh, you know the ninth amendment um, and, and, uh, and, and she places it in the context of a proper definition of individual rights. Uh, and you, you can't otherwise, you can't interpret what they're trying to do in the Constitution and what the Bill of Rights actually means without a proper conception of uh, the, the Ninth Amendment and, the, and what the Bill of Rights is actually trying to do. And look, I, you know, I admit that I would like to rewrite the Constitution. I, I think the Constitution is flawed and I think it could be better. But that's not my argument. My argument is even within this constitution, the proper understanding of individual rights, you would have a right, uh, a right to an abortion. And, but it, it might need uh, what the constitution is lacking. And this is, this is the great tragedy, I think, more than anything, is a definition of individual rights, is an explanation of what the Bill of Rights is there for, is an explanation, a more explicit explanation of what the unenumerated rights of, and whether they view it as that is static thing, only the things that exist right now, or whether they viewed it as a dynamic thing, with with uh, these. So that something explicit like that would be a great feature. There is um, there's a project that um, John Stossel is working on that you might find interesting, uh, where he's interviewing people, or a, not so much interviewing people, is asking people to send him short videos of how you would rewrite the Constitution. What changes would you make to the Constitution? And I think he's going to air that video on July 4th. And I submitted a, a, I submitted a video that I think he's going to play where I basically, say, you know, I basically say this, that a definition of individual rights is necessary. And then I, I talk about the four separations that I'd like to see in the Constitution. Separation, a clear separation of state from ideas vis-a-vis -vis state and church. Uh, and then a separation of state from economics, a separation of state from science and a separation of state from education. Um, so uh, I've submitted that to Stossel. I assume he's going to use it. He always uses my stuff. So um, that look for that July 4th out of the Stossel channel. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, Danny. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, Subscribestar, Locals, and just making an appropriate contribution. 
uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.